Palmetto Outdoor Experience YouTube channel. All right, everybody. Um, chances are, if you are watching this video, you have purchased a stripped upper receiver and you're wondering what it takes to put it together. In this video, I'm going to show you the tools that you're going to need, um, everything you're going to need to buy to complete your rifle. Um, this video right here is going to be for the guy or girl or whoever that um, doesn't necessarily have the proper workbench as an advice, a gun vice, like an armor's vice, in order to really build your rifle correctly. This right here, I've done two rifles like this in the past and they're flawless. I live in an apartment. My shop that I use is about 45 minutes away and um, I've had really good luck doing this. Um, I always you know, go back and I do check the torque and everything and make sure that everything is correctly torqued into spec, but I have not had a problem. Um, not everybody has access to a vice, a proper workbench. Um, it's just not feasible for some people. So let's get started and let's see what tools you got to have. So first thing is important, make sure to have some good music in the background. I always make sure I play some Rush. So you're going to start off with a hammer. That's going to be for your roll pins. You're going to need a set of roll pin punches, um, a, a good set of Allen wrenches, an armor's wrench. I actually have two. This is for Yankee Hill machine stuff. But um, let's see what we got here. Okay, the first thing that we have that we're going to work on is going to be the stripped lower. So, this strip lower is a Spikes Tactical Lower, and we're going to use the Palmetto State Armory um, A2 style build kit. Okay. Um, kind of change the camera angle a little bit. So, I know this is going to be like three different gun manufacturing companies parts into one. You know what? I don't care. It works. It works for me. It'll work for you. This is kind of a budget build, but it's also going to be, I'm thinking, pretty nice. It's going to be a really oddball rifle. And, um, yeah, it should be fun. It's always aggravating, that's for sure. There's always going to be some aggravating stuff to it. But it's really not that bad and it's not that intimidating. So, we'll start on the lower first. I will go ahead and note, um, also need to get a uh, pair of needle nose pliers out of the bag. This detent right here is a booger. That's going to be the hardest one of them all. Um, so, let's get started. Got our hand grip, our trigger parts. We won't be needing this one. Uh, we'll be needing this screw, but we don't need the trigger guard. We'll need more spare parts. So we got the the mag release here. I normally start with the mag release first. Uh, it's just easy. You can go ahead and knock it out really quick. So right here is your mag release. You want to place this in right here. Put your spring in. Take this little bullet or uh, bullet button. And the way that I do it, I'm kind of going in reverse right here. Okay. So the way that I start. I'll go ahead and press it in right there, and I'll screw this bad boy on here. Okay, 
the key is is you want to make sure that you get this the bolt here about flush and what I'll have to do is get something like it's something plastic I normally use a pin to push down my button there all the way and this allows you to screw it on in I want to check where we are right here. Okay, um, I'll put a magazine in it because I might have to uh, wind it in just a little bit more, but I normally keep it flush. It normally works. Okay. All right, so uh, we took a pause there for a second. I had to try to locate some stuff. Um, of course, I think that uh, Palmetto State Armory, they didn't send me my detent for the, uh, for the, uh, I'm kind of flustered now because uh, I hate when stuff like that happens. But luckily I have like a spare parts box and I'll have the detent in there for that. Um, yeah, I, I just, I swear. That just drives me nuts. It drives me off the wall. So, let's find this detent in here for this. For the buffer spring. Keep all these parts together. Yeah, I picked that up a long time ago. And I just had it for spare parts. I think it was in the clearance rack. Let's see if this one has the detent in here. That's it. Yes. Final springs. Trigger guard. Springs. Hope we can find the correct one. I gotta remember. Okay, it should be this one here. I love how organized this stuff is. Good God. No wonder it was on clearance. And I might wind up finding that piece. It might be in some of these bags, but I want to make sure I keep all my, my stuff separate. Get all these. That's the Palmetto State Armory. It's always good to keep spares, especially detents and springs, because you will lose them. Okay. And I'm so sorry that this video is going really slow, but I just want you guys to see this is the reality of it. Whenever people sit there and they build a gun on on uh, YouTube, they have, you know, there's no telling how many times that they've gone through and and like practiced this. I'm gonna put this. You know, I'll put that in the spare parts box. And um, they don't show you the reality of it that you're you're gonna lose stuff. You're gonna have incidences where you don't have the correct stuff, they don't send you everything, then you're running up to the gun shop to, uh, you know, to buy a spring. So that's how that detent right there goes in. It's that spring here. You can see it. You want to push that detent all the way in. Kind of hold it down. And uh, the A2 style doesn't have like a castle nut. The way it locks in is right here. And I'll show you how all that works. But I'm just going to kind of hand tighten it. I want it to be fairly tight. So there's that detent. And we'll go ahead for just fun. We'll go ahead and drop in the buffer. Now this is a rifle length buffer system. Hopefully. I won't have any problems with gassing or, you know, because I am using a carbine length barrel. Should be fine. I've done this before, so. Alright, the next step is we're going to need to put, I think, the trigger in next. Because we have this detent right here for the, uh, uh, the rear pin. I'll have to mess around with it for just a minute just to make sure. Like I said, I haven't built one of these in about a year. 
So, uh, it just take me a minute to just remember everything. Uh, I know how they go together. I know how to do it. I just want to make sure I do it right the first time. And it's good to take your time and, um, you know, don't try to rush this because if you rush it, you're going to have problems. And I have had those problems. I actually bought a trigger from um, Bear Creek Arsenal one time. Bought a rifle from them. And um, not trying to knock on the company, but the tr something was was extremely wrong with that trigger. And the, uh, I guess the sear catch or whatever was non-functional or it was just out of spec so bad and a uh, first shot the rifle ran full automatic um, scared me because that's not how it was designed to do and um, I wound up jerking all that stuff out long story short I never bought anything from them again but it's things like that that you got to pay attention to and um, you know it, uh, it can be aggravating but yeah let me uh, full, fiddle with this for a little bit and um, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the front takedown pin. It's very crucial that you have a pair of needle nose pliers because this thing, I have fought with these for a couple of hours before I ever figured it out. And like I said, this was all a learning process for me. I built quite a few lowers, quite a few. And uh, we're going to try to do this without scratching our lower receiver. Good Lord, it's going to tell you it's pain. You want to grab it right on the tip. Try not to scar anything up. Slide your pin in with that. Then take your front takedown pin and put it directly in front. And I just knocked it off. That's what I'm saying. It is difficult. That spring's under a load. Uh, our orientation's correct. Dang. I'm gonna fight this one. See, this is why you don't see whenever these guys sit there and they put them together really quick. They probably tried it for seven or eight times and they picked out the shot that was perfect. You're gonna fight this. Look at there. We got it. To remove this, which I'm not going to do. There is a hole right here. And it looks like the spike step. No, 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 no. We're good. What you do is you'll put a needle inside there, push the detent down, rotate the pin, slide it out, it'll all come apart. Oh, nice. Nicely done. So, right now, if you're following this video, you have installed, we have installed the, uh, a2 style buffer tube and um, the buffer st or the A2 stock, which the finish on this thing is terrible. For $175, Palmetto like State Army could have done a little bit better, but like I said, we're going slightly budget. Um, we, we at least did spend some good money on the barrel um, and the, the uh, gassing system and all that. I have right around a thousand dollars in this thing, believe it or not. And I went, I'm not going to say cheap, because nothing about it's cheap, but um, a little bit more on the affordable side, because not everybody can afford the very best. And um, this, like I said, is just for the guy who, or girl, who bought some stuff and they're going to try their hand at putting one together. So. That's going to do it for the first part of the uh, lower receiver build. The next thing we're going to do is going to be trigger, safety, and uh, uh, grip here. And then we'll tackle this roll pin. I really want to make sure that I can find some tape to put over this because you're going to be striking it with a hammer. And you're going to have a, uh, this is where you're going to use one of your roll pin punches. You're going to use these twice. You're going to use one on the gas tube. And you're going to use one right here. So you're watching the Palmetto Outdoor Experience. Um, if you're watching this, make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, guys. So if you watched in the in the first part, we uh, 
we went ahead and uh, we installed our takedown pins, our mag release, our buffer, and our uh, stock here. So the next part we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and slide the safety or the uh, selector pin in right here. We really need a knife. Out here all ghetto and everything. Okay. Dang. Some good plastic here. Plastic. Okay. So, I believe we need to put it on uh, the fire. I can't remember. But, <clears throat> alright. So, the first thing you got is your um, your trigger. And this is the way that your spring should be oriented. My camera battery actually died, so I wasn't able to record putting the springs and everything on. It can be a pain, but... It's not too bad. You just want to be really careful. I've actually broke these springs before from Palmetto State Armory. They're brittle sometimes. And this right here, I think it's called your disconnector spring. I could be wrong. Please don't destroy me in the comments. And this right here is your disconnector. And it sits like so. So let's go ahead and put this piece in the rifle. And I might have to take this pin out, or the uh, the uh, mag kit, or the sorry, the selector. I think you do. I can't remember, but we're about to find out what you have to put in first, because I know it's one or the other. It's been a little bit, like I said before, I put you know since I put one of these together. So there we are. All right, it sits right in there like so. And we're going to go ahead and put the. Uh, yep, that's the way you do it. I couldn't remember. It's been it's been a while. And we're gonna go ahead and push in the pin. Trigger pin. Uh, let's see here. Get it halfway lined up. Right. And this is just a little tedious stuff that you gotta just take your time with. Make sure I have my pin indexed right. And uh, I've said it before, I'm no professional. I'm just trying to show you guys how I do it. And sometimes I'll use one of these as a lineup pin to kind of help gauge it. And this one's tight. Or I could be putting it together wrong. Shouldn't be though. I just know she's got some clearance issues here. I'm not gonna tap on it because it should just slide right in. But you know, we are using different companies and different manufacturer stuff, so it could be just a little bit different, a little bit of variances. It looks clear, the hole looks clear. Let's see here. It should just slide right in easy as so. Let's see here. See what our problem is. We're not lining up with our sear. Okay, and I really don't want to hit this thing with a hammer. This you're not supposed to do that. I need to quit what I'm doing. It's just uh, I don't know why this one's being so tricky. It's a really tight fit. Really tight fit. Hmm, and it could have been a little bit crooked. Let me fool with this for just a minute, but you get the basic concept here. Okay, so what I've done is uh, I just pushed in one of my roll pin punches just to index everything and get it uh, lined up. It's just machined really tight, so. 
we're going to go ahead and try to push the pin in and follow it with the roll pin punch. This is just machined really tight, I guess. The tolerance is just super tight. Because we get right here to the sear of the disconnector and it wants to stop. And it should be lining up, but it's a little bit of trouble. I'm going to work on this for just a second and get this pin in. Alright, so it took just a little bit of persuasion, but we got it in there. Um, it wasn't too bad. It's just, this is their enhanced trigger, and I don't know if it's just by the way that it's machined or whatever, but it's a super tight tolerances, which I guess are a good thing, and it can be a bad thing, because it just makes it a little bit challenging to put together, but it's not that bad. I had to get me a fresh adult beverage, too, because it's uh, a little bit stressful, so bear with me. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the safety selector. That is in. And what holds that in? There's a detent here. We'll do that here in just a second. Let's go ahead and get this trigger fully assembled here. So these springs rest right in behind here. Make sure we seat the springs correctly. I need to find that pin. I got springs laying everywhere and detents. Okay. So let's see if she goes in. A little bit challenging here. Not too bad. That one's going to go in a whole lot easier, of course. Make sure that's just oriented right. Okay, we're right here on the back side. Make sure it's lined up nice and smooth. We don't want to burr anything. You probably don't want to strike it, but I'm barely striking it. I wish I had a rubber mallet. Okay. Let's do a function test on our trigger. All right, safety works. So I know it was a little bit uh, <laughs> janky looking in order to install this, but uh, it's not as easy as you think. And it is easy, it just, you know, circumstances. So I actually have two different, um, from two different companies. I think this one's the Palmetto State and this is the XTS build kit from um, Academy. I just use that for parts. So, let's get our I'm going to go ahead and drop the hammer. Let's flip it over and uh, put the next detent in. Okay, we'll leave it on uh, Okay, so let's drop the D10 in. She's in. And I always put the spring in there first. Kind of put it right here. Line it all up and roll it in. Now before we bolt it, we're gonna go ahead and just test. Test our safety. And it works as so. Okay, we're good to go. Let's get this screw in the bottom of it right here. And uh, I will go ahead and say again, I am no professional. I have no formal training. This is just an average guy putting together a rifle in his home. We're gonna just set that right there. 
hopefully this will help you guys out if there's anybody out there that that want to do this and you're just kind of intimidated you know you think you got to have all this special stuff you do and to do it right you know you do but go ahead and make sure that's going to start smoothly this right here can be challenging to get this screw in I wish it was an allen head um, of course they didn't send me an allen head maple I think there's our allen heads okay look at there we got it started and I should be using Loctite on all this stuff and I will once I because I want to go back with Magpul on everything and whenever I do that I'm going to definitely Loctite everything correctly um, hand guard included but right now this is just for uh, educational purposes here but you definitely want to put a, a dot of Loctite on there I'm not going to tighten it too tight so let's see what we got So we're safe, ready to fire. And you know you can't put the safety on unless it's cocked back. So that is how you get your trigger assembly together. And it normally is a lot easier than that. And I don't know why that one wanted to be a booger. But if you're watching these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, I'm just trying to help you guys out that I do this like I said I'll say it again I'm no professional but um, I know what it's like to try to put something together and you see somebody doing it all nice and smooth and it goes just perfect that's not always the case you're you know it, it can it can be a little bit challenging but it's not bad uh, you're watching the Palmetto Outdoor Experience this was episode two we're gonna call it Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if there's anybody watching these videos that that uh, want to, you know, give me any constructive criticism, I'll definitely take it. Um, you know, I'm just out here trying to help people and uh, grow the YouTube channel a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm no professional. I'm not sitting here telling you this is how it's got to be done. There's people who do this and do it flawlessly, and they can put them together twice as fast as I'm doing. But I'm just trying to help you guys out because um, there's, you know. If you can do it at home, why not? Why pay somebody to do it? Thank you again. You're watching the Palmetto Outdoor Experience. Have a great day. Hey everybody, back again. I'm going to go ahead and state I am no professional. I'm just here to try to help if you have any questions on how to assemble your lower. And um, well, pretty much we're going to build an entire gun. So right now we're going to do the uh, the mat or the uh, bolt release, and um, this one can be a little bit tricky. I already dropped the uh, spring inside here, and I'm going to put that little detent here. And what I like to do first is to get the roll pin started first. Um, it it can be a pain in the butt, and this is where your roll pin punches come into play. Um, I'm sure that there's a better way to do this. Um, I'm sure that there is, but this is the way that I do it. This is how I know how to do it. I used to do this with a Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer because at the time I did not know how to do it. Um, I'm going to compress that spring just a little bit with some pliers and just get it started in the hole here if I can. This can be a pain. I really need three hands, but I don't have them. I need somebody else to hit the hammer right here. I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing here because you don't want to scar up your lower. And I didn't have any tape because I'll normally tape it out really nice. Um, let me get this thing started. Let's see here. Oops. 
started crooked. We don't want that. Okay, we don't want to go too far, but we do want to get it started. This right here is where it really helps to pay attention, and you have to have a set of roll pin punches. Um, I've seen people that just beat the piss out of their lower. Don't do that. Um, make sure that this is oriented correctly here. All right, stupid. Make sure you put it in right now. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, that's how it looks. That's how you want it to see it. Make sure everything looks right. Get that thing lined up. Uh, we're going to use another roll pin punch to index the hole. If we can get it in, it helps to have another one. That way you can index your hole. Uh, let me get back in the camera view here. So what I do, and this is how I do it, is I'll use another roll pin punch to index the hole. And this spring's a little bit tight, it's definitely under tension. I don't know how in the world you'd ever get this thing off if you had to. Oop. Let me pull this, uh, let me knock this pin just a little bit further through. It'll actually help us get the space together. Don't worry about flush. It will almost flush. Okay. Right now, we're just flush right here. And I hate doing this part. I really do. The key is to just make sure it all stays lined up. Well, if it don't, you're in a world of mess. I don't remember how in the world I ever done this here by myself. But, I mean... Okay, look at there guys, we got it started. It wasn't too bad, but we got it started. I wanna go ahead and send this roll pin home, and I'm just kinda, of, let me put something over this, because we're gonna be striking it barely, but we still might hit it. We don't wanna do that. Make sure to protect your, your lower you know, you've already spent the money on all this stuff, and you don't want to scar it up and booger it. Okay. There right there is how you put in your mag or uh, your bolt release. It wasn't too bad. So, that right there is a 100% completed lower receiver um, we would normally have to put in the uh, trigger guard here but this being a spiked tactical they're already molded in or they're already machined in or casted in whatever you want to say everything's good and smooth function test and everything um, safety does work make sure the safety works course okay guys in the next video we're going to tackle the uh, top end here so stay tuned make sure you like and subscribe um, like I said again I'm no professional I'm just sitting here in my house like most of you people are you don't have access to all the fancy tooling and everything um, so 
make sure to like and subscribe. I'm just here to help, help support the channel. Um, no professional, just make sure you have good tools. And I have fair to middling tools. So, thank you again. Make sure to like and subscribe.